Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about three simple steps to thrive in 2023 and beyond, regardless of the economy, regardless of rates, regardless of inventory, regardless of inflation, to no longer play the backseat as the passenger who is a victim to the market and to grab the helm, to grab the driver's seat position and to be able to push the needle on profit and performance in your business, regardless of the market. So you can thrive, not just survive. And to be able to thrive, not just in a fair, a fair weather market, you know, sunny skies, lollipops, unicorns and rainbows, low interest rate, fair weather market, but in any market. That's the name of the game, friends, to be in a power position, in a growth position, in a thrive position in any market. And that might seem like a far-fetched idea for many of you right now. If you've been bludgeoned and uh, had your nuts, proverbial nuts or ovaries kicked in as hard as many of the clients have spoken to and uh, really had the opportunity and privilege to serve over the last several months months as we've been facing this rather turbulent and challenging market shift, chances are you've come through this year with some significant challenges, right? And so the idea of thriving in any market may seem like a Pollyanna kind of thing where it's like, really, Dorn, you really think that's possible to thrive in any market? And I'm 100% certain, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, 100% knowing that you can thrive, not just in this market, but any market. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Regardless of rates, regardless of inventory, regardless of the economy, people are gonna keep getting in the market, moving up in the market, getting married, getting divorced and dying. And all those require transactions. So there's all kinds of business to be had. The question is not, is there business? The question is, how much of it are you gonna take? How much of that market share are you gonna claim for yourself and your business? And so today we're gonna to talk about how to insulate yourself from these market conditions, to be least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most, and to give you some clarity on how you can be in the power position, how you can gain more locus of control, and how you can position yourself to prosper and to win and to grow and expand your business while everyone else and certainly much of your competitors are dropping like flies right now at worst or at best they're just spinning their wheels in survival mode prison you don't want to be one of them right so let's get into it and do it shall we now before we do though i want to ask you because everyone's got a different perspective on what thrive means just like if you were to ask someone what does success mean to you and you asked a thousand people that question, chances are you get a thousand different answers, right? Everyone's got a different perspective on what success means. And I think the same is true for thrive. What does thrive mean? You'd have a different answer for every person you ask, and I'm sure you're no exception. But I think that's a great launching off pad place to start from is just asking yourself, what does it mean to thrive for you? And that ties in perfectly, that dovetails perfectly in with the first of the three steps I'm going to share with you. And that is to write down exactly what it means to thrive in each area in your life, in your business that matters to you, namely family, fitness, finances, faith, and freedom, the big fives. You want an effed up life? You want to make sure you're considering all five of those. And when I say effed up, I mean effing freaking fantastic, right? In absolute thrive mode. So family, fitness, finances, faith, and freedom. Those are the big five you consider. And you want to be as specific as possible. Most people don't get much because they don't expect much. So you want to inspect what you expect from your life and from your business because the problem with most people is not that they shoot too high and miss. It's that they shoot too low and hit, right? That's the problem where they just don't have high expectations because, well, it's a market shift right now. It's a tough market right now. I need to be, quote unquote, realistic. Sound familiar? So most people in this market are just hunkering down. They're holding their breath. 
And they're just hoping, wishing, and praying that the market shifts back to a more congenial refi market because they only know how to play one game. And that's how to win in a fair weather market. But the key to success in this business, certainly for peace of mind, security, and longevity in this business, and certainly for consistent growth in this business, is to be able to have the secret sauce to win in any market. And that's certainly a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com is to learn the secret sauce on how to do exactly that. Obviously, it's not something you can just Google search if you hadn't noticed by now. But that would be a good place to start, friends, is getting clarity on what would it look like to thrive in each one of those areas. And when you write down specificity with clarity on exactly what it looks like to thrive in your finances. You're going to have more power to create what you want because you have specificity because most people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. So knowing what you want is the first step. It's like, how do you play basketball without a hoop? How do you play golf without a hole, right? It's mission impossible. How do you play hockey without a net? Could you imagine playing those sports without having the specificity of a target to shoot for? Ridiculous, right? But so many business owners in general and mortgage professionals in particular are just meandering. They're just meandering aimlessly. And at very best, most are just setting really substandard, lame-ass, tepid, and realistic goals that lead them into the muck and mire of mediocrity because realistic goals are not exciting. They're not compelling. They're not motivational. They're not aspirational. They're just enough to pay the bills. They're just enough to get by. They're just enough to kind of just don't go, be okay and do okay. Something tells me you didn't get in this business to just do okay. Something tells me you didn't get in a hundred percent commission. You eat with your kill with no safety net and take the leap from the nest to grow wings on the way down on a hundred percent commission to just do okay. True. So screw being just okay. Screw average, screw mediocrity, go for greatness, go for something that scares you and excites you at the same time. Right? Because frankly, conventional thinking produces conventional results. So stop following the herd and doing what other people think might be realistic. Because at the end of the day, the fastest way to live a mediocre life is to be realistic. If you want to create greatness in your life, if you want to thrive, you got to stop being realistic. Because here's the thing. How do you know if it's realistic or not? Sure, if you're trying to dig the foundation for your skyscraper with a gardening trowel, taking a long ass time to get there with a whole lot of fruitless toil and grinding and expecting very little in terms of progress. Yes, that would be realistic. But when you got the excavator, it changes everything, right? The amount you can get done in one day with the excavator equates to a full month or a full quarter or a full year with the shovel. So being realistic is really hinging upon how productive you are, how powerfully productive you are. And the more you can upgrade your productivity and your power to produce, the more you can get outside of the realistic prison that you've been in, chances are, and start to expand your mind to something more compelling and something that fires you up. And I guarantee you, just paying your bills is not going to fire you up. Just holding your breath and waiting for market conditions to become more congenial is not going to fire you up. That's not going to get you pepping your step and sparkling your eye and motivated on a Monday morning. That's for sure. So here we are as we dive in to the last Facebook Live, the last episode for our Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast of 2022. Perfect time to dive into setting targets and motivational, inspirational targets for the new year that get you thinking, how the heck am I going to pull that off? That's what I want you to think about. And that's the immediate response and reaction I want you to have when you think of a BHOG, a big, hairy, audacious goal for 2023. What would that look like in all the areas that matter to you? How much income would you earn? How many hours a week would you be working? And what are you spending your time doing? Are you in the minutia 
Are you putting out fires? Are you dealing with loan level issues? Are you sifting through a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets with a bunch of crappy leads off the internet? Or is it all by referral? If it's by referral, write that down. Are you generating uh, borrowers that are more affluent, that are easy to convert? Is your average commission per deal the same as it was last year? Is it better than last year? If it's better than last year, because it's a more affluent clientele that's referred to you from a silver spoon, from a silver platter, from top producing realtor partners, then specify that as well. If that's part of your Thrive plan, write that down. How many hours a week are you working? What are you doing with your time off? Are you spending more time with the family? Are you spending more time on vacation? How many vacations have you taken that lets you know you're living the dream in Thrive mode? Are you towed around by the electronic leash? with your smartphone constantly beeping at every turn because you're literally run by your electronic leash every single hour of every single day because you feel like you have to always be available to answer to these borrowers and to these partners? Or do you have more autonomy, independence, freedom? Do you have the ability to pick and choose the kind of clients and partners you work with? Or are you having to play the bitch to anyone who you know, wants to demand your time and your attention because you're afraid of losing out? You're afraid of missing out on business because you're in scarcity prison. Get clarity on what does it look like, feel like, smell like, taste like, sound like when you're living your dream, making freedom money in thrive mode. The more specificity that you can articulate and specify by writing it down, the more power you're going to have to create it. So let's expand what you believe is possible by first having the audacity to write it down. If you had the excavator instead of just settling for the shovel, what would be possible? If you had a system that allowed you to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, chasing but, chasing and kissing butts, and you had the ability to pick and choose the partners you work with, and you just worked with rock star partners that were doing 20 plus buyer sides a year, and you had the ability now to just work with the elite few going narrow, deep, and rich with just a few instead of shallow, wide, and skimpy with many, and you had a stable of, say, seven to 15 top producers sending you one, two, three deals a month, and you built your business on a solid foundation in the purchase market by having a stable of VIP partners sending you all their business all the time. So you're least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most. What would be possible now? What would be possible when you have that kind of business coming in? that kind of volume flowing in your pipeline, that kind of commission month after month, year after year with consistency, no longer having to worry where your next deal is going to come from. How would that change your life? Get connected to that because until and unless you get connected to it and you can see it with your faith eye, you're never going to be able to see it with your flesh eye. It starts with seeing in advance, like Napoleon Hill said, if you can believe it, and see it and believe it, you can achieve it. But it starts with seeing it in your inner eye, in your with your faith eye. And if you can believe it and see it in your imagination, you're a very, very far long along the a long ways along the path to making it a reality. Easy for me to say. So we want to make that the first step in the process, kind of like a architect, an architect doesn't just build a house ad hoc, do they? They start by drafting up the plans. They work with the builder of that home because they have in their imagination what they want to create. And then they work in collaboration with the architect to draft up the blueprint. Well, you are the builder and you are the architect. So you want to start with the end in mind first, as the late and great Stephen Covey once said, start with the end in mind. And don't just think about it in terms of income. Think about it in terms of freedom, autonomy, independence. Think about it in terms of your health. Are you in the best shape you've ever been in? Or are you a little frumpy around the middle? Do you have lots of energy? Or are you having to take, in, are you having to take two or three naps a day because 
that's what you need just to make it through the day. Or worse, having to fill yourself with coffee all day just to make it through the day because you're so, so lethargic running on fumes otherwise. So what does your fitness look like? What does your finances look like? What does your family situation look like? What's your marriage if you're if you have a spouse or you're married, what does that look like? Get connected to it with specificity, granular specificity. This is the time to do it, guys. As the late and great Jim Rohn once said, don't start your year until you've finished it on paper. And then as you launch into 2023, don't start your week until you've finished it on paper in terms of the execution plan, the battle plan, the daily action plan. We're going to get into that in a moment. But it starts with the end in mind. So I trust you've got some clarity. You've written down a few things of what Thrive Mode looks like for you. Yes? Okay, very good. So let's move on to the next step now. And the next step in the process, frankly, is really mission critical because without having a battle plan, an action plan, it's just wishful thinking, right? You hear people say, I hope it's going to pan out. I hope things get better. I hope my business improves. I hope rates go down. I hope... Uh, things turn around. I hope I can make more money than I did last year. And hope is great if you're in prison, right? Hope is really important if you're in prison, but it doesn't make for a very good marketing plan, does it? So we don't want you smoking the hope dome. We don't want you hoping. We want you knowing. And that's where having a battle-tested, proven plan comes in. And that's certainly, again, a big reason why smart, ambitious, and growth-minded mortgage pros hire us because they realize it's going to be a whole lot more expensive to learn from their own mistakes, just throwing yogurt at the fan, hoping something sticks versus working with an expert with a proven plan. Because again, this kind of a market, not an easy code to crack when it comes to learning how to win in any market, let alone this one. This is a rather unusual beast if you hadn't noticed by now. So we want to make sure you have a effective plan in place. So the second step in the process is determine the number one high impact habit to achieve your thrive goal in each area. So if you want to be fit, for example, let's say you're a little frumpy around the middle. You've kind of let your fitness goals uh, go to the wayside. You've let your fitness habits, your eating, uh, your uh, exercise, all that kind of stuff go to the wayside. You realize, man, I need to double down on my fitness goals, on my health and wellness goals. Otherwise, you know, if I don't take good care of my temple, you know, I'm going to uh, be a train wreck. I need to take care of this temple called my body before it starts to uh, crumble underneath me, right? Because if you want to climb the mountain of success, if you're running on fumes, that's not going to bode well, right? You're going to be on the side of the road billowing smoke. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, part of your thrive goal for 2023 is you want to be fit right? Or you want to lose uh, 10 pounds or 15 pounds, or you want to put on 10 pounds of muscle or a combination thereof. The more specificity you can have around that, the better, right? But as you know, there's a million of one different things you can do to improve your fitness. You could do cardio, you could do weightlifting, you could do yoga, you can go for a walk, you could go for a cycle, you could, you know, eat less carbs and eat more protein and you could do keto and you can do this and you can do that. There's a million and one different diets, right? So there's so many different things you can do. And the problem with having so many options is it becomes overwhelming, right? Same thing with your business. You want to go from where you are to where you want to be. Let's say you want to double your business. And in order to do that, you need to get an extra five deals a month to get to your income target for 2023. And there's a million and one ways you can get there, right? There's cold calling realtors, there's Facebook ads, there's buying leads, there's going to networking events, there's putting on events, there's hiring a virtual assistant to make calls on your database or calling on realtors, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a million and one different ways to skin the cat, but there's only one shortest path to the cash. So the thing you want to be thinking about is priority numero uno, the single most potently profitable activity that will push the needle on profit and performance at the highest level. So instead of thinking about quick fixes, you want to think about the most potently profitable and productive daily habit that if you will just install that into your daily calendar, it will take care of everything else. 
So instead of thinking about a myriad of different strategies, a rat's nest of different strategies, you want to think about just one. But Dorn, isn't that a little anemic? Well, yes, that is anemic if that's all you're relying on. But the problem is, is chances are you're relying on doing a bunch of different things and most of which are not working very well. What I want you to focus on is not the 80-20 rule, you know, the 20% activities that produce 80% of your results. Instead, I want you to focus on the 90-10, the 10% activity that produces 90% of your results. Because if you can focus like a laser beam on those high impact activities and just do that one thing that pushes the profit pushes the needle on profit and performance in your business at the highest level, everything else sorts itself out because you only have so much time in the day, right? So if you're spending most of your time doing that 10% activity that produces 90% of your results and you're focusing like a laser beam on that, you're going to be light years ahead of doing the things that are the 80% activities that produce 20% of your results. Or you'll still be leaps and bounds ahead of the activities that are the 20% activities that produce 80% of your results. Get what I'm talking about here? It's about leverage. It's about maximum result for the least amount of time, energy, money, and stress. So what what does that activity look like for you? Well, if we go back to the fitness metaphor, it's chances are it's just getting a membership at a gym if that's part of your fitness plan, or maybe a yoga studio if that's part of your fitness plan, whatever that is for you. Or maybe it's getting your, uh, you know, you have a home gym, you already have all the gear. uh, And now it's a matter of putting it in your calendar and maybe getting an accountability partner to make sure you show up or maybe a personal trainer to make sure you show up. But chances are there's just that one thing where if you were to just exercise three, four, five days a week, like for me, I don't feel the same going to work if I don't exercise. So Monday to Friday, I exercise. It's called, it's part of my magic morning routine. So I wake up at like 10 to five. I know for those of you who are night owls, that probably sounds like hell, right? Waking up that early, but I go to bed at nine o'clock. So for me, waking up at 10 to five, it's not that big of a deal. Plus it's a habit now because I've been doing it for so long. But if you go to bed early, it's a lot easier to get up early. And then I have my God time because I had a God encounter when I was 19, living in a frat house. And I had this Holy Spirit rock my world experience that changed my life forever. I met Jesus, changed my life forever. And so it's really important for me to have quality time with my maker, meeting with my Jesus every day, every work day. When I start my day, I have my God time on my knees in prayer, connect to my maker, connect to source. And then I launch to the gym and I go to the gym for an hour. And when I'm in the gym, I'm not just clanging and banging early in the moan and yonin, I'm also listening to inspiration, motivation, education while I'm exercising. So I'm improving my mindset, my skill set, while I'm also improving my health set. So it's the same stone, but I hit two birds with the same stone. It's called net time, no extra time needed. So this is one of the ways you can leverage your time and win your day, because when you win your morning, you win your day. And after that one hour, after listening to a podcast or an audio book or something like that, I got fuel in my rocket. I got pep in my step. I'm ready to kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum and crush it. I'm ready to freaking rock, right? So there's something energetically about starting the day like that. Now, do you think if I had the habit of exercising five days a week, do you think that increases or decreases the odds of eating healthy? You tell me. You probably guessed it by now. It increases the odds I'm going to eat healthy. Why? Because I'm taking care of my temple. I'm giving myself self-care. And self-care is inextricably linked with self-love. There's a self-honor and a self-respect that's attuned to a frequency of also eating in kind. If you have self-respect and self-honor and you're feeling good in your body, you're more likely to eat healthy foods versus crappy foods, right? Because you're in an energetic frequency and an identity that's in sync with that kind of eating and that kind of a lifestyle. So now that's naturally going to impact how you eat. 
So now you're exercising regularly, you're eating regularly. And now once you get in the habit of that, here's the cool thing about a habit. Before it's a habit, it's pure discipline, right? It's pure discipline. And discipline is such that it's hard to do, but it's also one of those things that once you get in the habit of doing it, it's harder to not do than to do. Because once it becomes a habit, once you own that habit, it owns you. And now it's easier to do than not do. So it shifts from a discipline where you have to use the power of your will to do it and have to literally commit to doing it and own that commitment every day. The word commitment means to do what you said you were going to do long after the mood you set it in has left you, right? When you're in your cozy bed and you don't feel like getting out of bed and you have to do the the countdown timer, right? Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. And you launch out of bed, even though you don't want to, you don't feel like it, it's inconvenient, it's uncomfortable. But as you do that consistently, you get comfortable being uncomfortable. And as that becomes a habit, it becomes easier to do than not do. So that's part of the process is developing that discipline muscle that spawns a muscle of having champion level habits. Because if you have champion level ambitions, but chump level habits, we got a problem, right? If you've got million dollar ambitions, but you got trailer park habits, we've got a problem. So we've got to get those in sync. It's called praxis. Praxis is a word that denotes having an alignment of that which you believe with that which you do. So if you believe you're capable and worthy of doubling your income, believe you're capable and worthy of making half a million or a million dollars a year, if you believe you're capable and worthy and disciplined to be able to create the life of your dreams, now we need to put that into praxis, which means that what you believe actually shows up in the real world. Otherwise, what happens is we end up becoming our own worst critic and our own Achilles heel and our own bottleneck and our own own worst enemy. And we end up getting in our own way and our mind trash and our stinking thinking keeps us from the greatness. We know we are called to and capable of because we don't have praxis. We're not aligned. One of the reasons why we struggle to get aligned, I believe is because we take on too much right? We take on too much. We got this goal and that goal, and we got this area in our life. We want to improve in this area in our life. We want to improve in that area in our life. We want to improve in every area we want to improve. We got 10 different habits that we want to cultivate all at once. And we're just like a fart in a freaking windstorm. We're all over the place, right? And it's like, no wonder we struggle to adapt and adopt these champion level habits because we're just taking on too much. And that's one of the things I love about elegant simplicity. I'm reading a great book called Essentialism right now. Highly recommend it. Really profound, powerful truths on how we can multiply our results by subtraction. That less is actually more. So instead of trying to do more, which ends up having us just be burnt out and frazzled and fried and at our wits end, and dropping all the balls because we're taking on too much and we become yesaholics because we're saying yes to too many things. And when we say yes to one thing, we're saying no to something else. That's just the way it is because we can't take it all on. There's something's got to give, something's got to break. We only have a limited amount of bandwidth, time and energy and money. So when we say yes to one thing, we're saying no to something else. And usually it's to our detriment because we're saying yes to the good things, which means we say no to the great things. And so essentialism is about saying no to the good things so we can say yes to the great things. Because until and unless we're willing to divorce good, we're never going to be able to step up to great. I'll say that again. Until and unless we're willing to divorce good, we're never going to be able to step up to great because greatness requires devotion single-minded devotion to the vital few versus chasing the trivial many. We have to stop diluting ourselves and be like 
that magnifying glass that takes the warm rays of the sun and converges them into a single minded, potently powerful focus. And potent focus can light something on fire with its power, light something on fire with its heat, because it's so singular and it's so focused that it literally becomes like a laser beam. And that's precisely what I want you to step into. I want you to embrace the power of the laser beam. In order to do that, I don't want you to have 10 habits. I don't want you to have 15 habits. I don't want you to even have five habits. I want you to have one habit. Start with one. One habit that's the single most potently powerful, productive, and result-getting high-impact habit in each area you want to thrive in. If it's exercise, get your ass in the gym or whatever your exercise routine is. Put it in your calendar. Get yourself an accountability partner. Get someone to kick you in the ass and to do it until it becomes a habit. If it's pushing the needle on profit and performance in your business, I'll tell you. Let me ask you this, actually, before I tell you. What's the single most potently powerful and profitable high-impact activity you can ever do in your business that pushes the needle on profit and performance at the highest level in your business? What is it? Is it networking events? Is it putting on uh, some kind of a educational event? Is it you know getting leads off uh, Zillow or Realtor.com or Facebook leads? I'm here to tell you it's none of that. All that's doing it the hard way. There's only two of the shortest path to the cash methods to get you from where you are to where you want to be. And one of them is not even relevant to the newbie. And the two shortest path to the cash methods to grow your business at the highest level with the highest impact with the least amount of time, energy, money, and stress are number one, getting top producing realtors who are doing 20 plus buyer sides a year to send you all their business all the time. Okay. That's called a VIP partner. So that's number one. There's no other source of business when it comes to buy referral business that's higher capacity than that. Think about it. Is there any other referral partner source that can send you more business more often than that? Chances are no one else even comes close, true or not true. Right now, if you've been in business for a while and you have a database, the second most potently profitable source of business is your database. And so that's where having a skill set to develop systems, policy, procedure, protocol, campaigns that allow you to mine the gold from that database becomes so mission critical because the data does not make you money. You may have noticed that over the last 12 months. You may have a big database and be maybe you're getting half a deal a month or a deal a month and you might have 500, 1,000 plus past clients. You might be saying, well, Doran, of course, it's because rates went up. Yeah, but those people know people who know people who are still doing transactions. Remember, there's still people doing purchase transactions. There's still people doing cash out refis. There's still people getting divorced. There's still people doing... Uh, you know, estate transactions because someone passed away. The problem is those transactions are happening through your competitors instead of you because you don't have a system in place to mine the gold from that database. So when it comes to habits, those are the two habits you want to be focusing on. I'd say to start, focus on the realtors because Frankly, right now, you're going to get the referral business. You may get the you know, occasional cash out refi, but you, know, you can get 10 partners in the next 90 days sending you a deal a month each. That's 10 extra deals. If you're making 3K a deal, that's a $30,000 per month pipeline you can build from scratch, literally from scratch, from dud to stud, from zero to hero in 90 days, build a $30,000 per month pipeline in 90 days just by focusing on that one habit and becoming obsessed with booking appointments. Because if you were to ask me, Dorn, what's the one activity that I need to focus on that I can judge my progress by, that I can judge my level of success by, that if I can just have a singular focus would guarantee my success in 2023 and guarantee I'm thriving versus just surviving in 2023, what would that be? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. The answer is 
How many appointments have you booked this week with top producing realtors? Because when you have a system to turn those appointments into top producing realtors who are eating out of your hand, who are literally chomping at the bit to want to work with you, you can write your own ticket in this business, not just in a fair weather market when rates are low, but in any market, including this one. Agreed? Think about it. They're still doing business. And those top producers, they own the lion's share of the inventory. They might be down from last year, but they're still doing business. In fact, their competitors are dropping like flies, right? All the part-timers, they've already dropped like flies. All the ones who are doing the one deal a month or two deals a month, they've go, gone and got a day job now. So their, com their competition has thinned out considerably over the last 12 months. So those guys, the top producers, they are taking market share like you would not believe right now. So that's your opportunity if you know how to attract them, if you know how to thread the needle on how to flip the script so that they need you more than you need them, right? So I want you to give yourself permission to have singular focus, to have un diluted, undistracted, undivided focus on just one magnificent obsession in your business. And that is how many appointments have you booked this week? Because if you do the math on this, if you will get yourself to book three to five appointments a week, and by the way, you might be thinking, but Dorn, I don't know how to get these appointments. They won't give me the time of day. Everyone and their dog is chasing after the same realtors. I don't know how to say what I need to say to get them to say, yes, they're throwing uh, all kinds of smoke screen, smoke screen, lame ass objections at me. I uh, can't get past them. Uh, they're telling me they already have a lender. Call me next week. They don't pick up the phone, blah, blah, blah. Or I can get the appointments, but then it, nothing materializes. It's just a bunch of fluff, a bunch of empty promises. If that's the case, Welcome to the club. That's another big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us is to learn how to crack the code on how to get the appointment and how to get it without cold calling. So instead of cold calling and just chasing these people around like all your competitors are and just following the herd like all your competitors are, we send out the words that work, that get them hot for what you got, receptive, open, eager, and even motivated to want to meet with you before you even talk to them. It's called the Realtor Attraction Campaign. And all you do is you use our Realtor Reconnaissance System to be able to compile a laser-focused list of top producing realtors. You can see how many buyer sides, how many seller sides, how many transactions, if they have a preferred lender or not. We don't really care if they have a preferred lender because once they get a taste of great, they're never going to want to settle for good. And that great is you working with you, not just offering great rates, great service, throw me a bone, or in this case, competitive rates and great service, throw me a bone. That's what your competitors offer. Don't let it be you. You're going to show them how to grow their business, how to expand their business. You're not going to be a mortgage parasite. You're not going to be a loan leech. You're going to help to bring business. You're going to help to push the needle on profit and performance in their business. Get them working smarter, not just harder. You're not just going to be someone who takes a piece of their pie. You're going to expand the size of their pie. You're going to help them to prosper. You're going to help them to put more zeros and commas in their bank account, bring more buyers and sellers, help them dominate on Google with five-star reviews, capture more leads at their open houses, convert more of those leads into closings, dead, turn their dead leads into hot for what you got leads, take those dead leads out of their trash can and into their cash can. You know what I'm talking about. It's about being of unique and compelling value. But Dorn, I don't know how to do that. Well, welcome to the club. That's why we've been in business for 17 years, because this kind of stuff is not an easy code to crack. You can't just Google search it. But it all comes down to that one thing. What's the single most profitable activity you could ever do in your business? And I'm here to tell you, it's booking appointments with top producing realtors. Because if you will get yourself to book three to five appointments a week, and you are armed and dangerous to do so, if you roll with us, we will make you armed and dangerous. So instead of showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife, we're rolling out the freaking tanks. So you will be armed and dangerous. You'll be able to book appointments with top producing agents like a hot knife through butter without the hell of cold calling. And then now that you have that locus of control and you're 
singular focus on just that one metric, just that one thing you're judging your progress by, booking appointments with top producing agents, do you think you could book three to five appointments a week if you had a proven plan and system to do so? abso freaking balooly right? There's no bot to doubt it. Of course you can, but you have to work smart, not just work hard. Instead of digging the hole for the foundation for your skyscraper with a shovel, we're rolling out the excavator, right? So now you're not just working smart, but you're working profitably in flow, in confidence, in certainty. So you can roll your shoulders back, put your freaking cape on, own your champion self, and have that certainty that you can book appointments at will because you have a proven plan, the words that work, the confidence, and the competence to do so. So that's the next thing you want to do in your Thrive Plan for 2023 and beyond is you want to zero things down to the singular focus of the highest impact, most productive habit you can ever do. If you want to have a sizzling, hot, juicy, connected, on fire, passionate marriage, that singular thing, if you ask me, is date night. I mean, you can miss a meal, but you don't want to miss date night, right? Because the alternative sucks, right? If you're anything like me, I got four kids. If I don't have date night, it's like dry bones in the desert living parallel lives like roommates. That freaking sucks, right? That gets old really fast. And I don't know about you, but I get mighty cranky, mighty quick. If a dude doesn't know when he's going to win every week, like me, if I don't know when I'm going to win every week, I get mighty cranky. I start showing my fangs. That's nothing nice for anybody, including myself, let alone my wife and kids. So that's the singular habit for a sizzling, hot, connected, passionate marriage in my world is date night right? Just one thing. How do you thrive in your business? Just one thing. Booking appointments with top producing agents. The second thing, mining the gold from your database, maximizing repeat and referral business. So if you look at all these different areas in your life, you want to thrive. Don't overcomplicate it, friends. Just focus on that one thing and start with that one thing. Put in your calendar, which leads to the third thrive mode strategy. The third step to thrive in 2023 and beyond, and that is block it in your calendar, right? Because until and unless you block it in your calendar, it's just a mere hope. It's just a mere wish, right? Everyone wants to be fit, rich, and happy. Most people are fat, broken, unhappy. Why is that? Because they never bother to get clarity on what they want to create, number one. Number two, they don't put it in their calendar. They don't exercise the daily disciplines because as the late and great Jim Rohn said, success is nothing more and a few simple disciplines, a few simple disciplines practiced every day. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. It's called the KISS method. Keep it simple, superstar. So that's it. Block it in your calendar, plan your work, work your plan. So at Planet Prosper at MortgageMarketingCoach.com, we have a practice called the Hour of Power. We have the magic morning routine where you feel your rocket, get yourself all fired up for the day because when you win your morning, you win your day. Because if you want to get champion level results, you got to have a champion level uh, identity with champion level habits that have you on a frequency of champion level energy, champion level confidence, champion level vitality, champion level pep in your step, sparkle in your eye, rolling your shoulders back and owning your champion self. All those are inextricably linked with champion level habits that are kicked off in the morning, right? So the magic morning routine is part of that system. Plan the work, work the plan, block it in your calendar, and then you just follow the instructions of your calendar right? If you want to create freedom, you got to give up your freedom. Let me say that again. If you want to create a life of freedom, you got to give up your freedom. It's like Ziggy Ziglar, the late and great Zig Ziglar. He said, if you can get yourself to do the things you need to do when you need to do them, there will come a time when you can do the things you want to do when you want to do them. In other words, you have to be willing to give up your freedom to claim your freedom. You got to be willing to plant a lot of seed before you see the harvest. 
So don't come to the marketplace with your need. Come to the marketplace with your seed. Don't come to life with your need. Come to it with your seed, your seed of clarity, your seed of vision, your seed of discipline, your seed of commitment, your seed of being willing to do whatever it freaking takes because you're more committed to your dream than you are your comfort zone. So don't bring your need, bring your seed. See, it's easy to do these things. You can book appointments, right? If you had the right plan, you could book appointments. If you had the right plan, you could get up earlier, right? If you had the right plan, you could exercise in the morning, right? So you could do these things. If someone paid you a G note to do these things every morning, cash money just for doing them without necessarily having to do with them perfectly, but just doing them, you'd do those all all day long and Sundays. Would you not? Because you wouldn't have to wait for the delayed gratification of the outcome. You wouldn't have to have the patience. You wouldn't have to have that delayed gratification. You get the G note in your pocket immediately knowing you're getting paid regardless, just because you showed up. Problem is life doesn't work that way, right? You got to show up. You got to keep showing up without necessarily seeing the harvest yet. You got to keep showing up, keep planting those seeds without seeing the fruit yet. You got to keep showing up in the gym of life, clanging and banging, all sweaty, all sore, lactic acid buildup, you know, feeling like you're just spent, not necessarily seeing much muscle being built yet. You got to keep showing up knowing that if you keep doing the champion level routine, you're going to get the champion level results. It's cause and effect. But you know what that takes? It takes commitment. It's the be, do, have, right? You, if you want to have the million dollar business, you got to have million dollar habits, which means you need to be the person who will commit to and follow through on those habits. You got to be committed. You got to be devoted. You got to be disciplined. You got to be that person who's so committed to your dream, you're going to do it in spite of the fact you don't feel like it, in spite of the fact you're not in the mood, in spite of the fact you're tired as hell, in spite of the fact you just want to complain and you want to sit in the fetal position with your tail between your legs and your thumb in your mouth feeling sorry for yourself because you're getting your ass kicked because life is hard sometimes, man. Life is hard. Believe you me, I feel you on that. Life is hard, but when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Life is hard. God never said life was going to be easy, right? Jesus said himself, he said, in this life, there will be trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer for I have overcome. So yeah, life is hard, but you know what? If you want to do the things that are hard, life becomes a lot easy a lot easier. If you do the things that are easy, life becomes mighty hard. It's a paradox, right? It's a paradox. If we only do the things that are easy, life becomes mighty hard. But if we'll do the things that are hard, life becomes mighty easy in comparison to the alternative. You with me on that? So you want to block it, block it into your calendar, plan the work, work the plan. Now, I want to talk about a couple other things real quick, give you some bonus tips. You guys want some bonus tips? Give me a shout out if you're ready for some bonus tips. If you are watching this live, hit me up, give a comment. Let me know you're listening. Let me know you're picking up what I'm putting down. And if you want some Thrive Mode bonus tips, hit me up. I want to know you're here. I want to know you're listening. And I'm going to hook you up, guys. Ask and you shall receive. And uh, by the way, I'm getting some beautiful comments up in here from my Facebook tribe. So I see you, I feel you, and I'm knowing you're there. So keep chiming in, guys. I'm loving the love. I'm loving the commentary and the connection. I love it that it's not just a monologue. It's a dialogue. That's the way it should be. Love me some 21st century technology when it works, right? So here's a bonus tip. You asked for it, you got it. Thrive Driver, number one. Have a system for tracking your progress. Have a system for tracking your progress. Because here's the truth. We can't improve that which we don't measure. How would we know if it's improved if we haven't measured it, right? So if it's your fitness, track your fitness. Maybe you can track how many times you worked out this week and this month. 
Have it on a whiteboard. Have it on an Excel spreadsheet. I don't care. Have it on a napkin. I don't care. Have some way to track your progress. Obviously, you can measure if you're looking to gain muscle mass, you can measure that. You can weigh yourself once a week, right? If you're looking to lose weight because you've gotten a little fluffy and flubby and you're looking to get more lean, you can measure that too, right? So you can measure those things. And the great thing about it is when you're measuring them, you get to see progress. When you see progress, it's like fuel in your rocket. It propels you even higher. It's self-reinforcing, right? It becomes motivational. So one of the things I realized on the front lines of capitalism as an entrepreneur, and it took me way too long to figure this thing out. So I hope you guys won't be uh, dumb as a sack of nails like me and take so long to figure this thing out because it took me way too long to figure it out. There's a big difference between revenue and profit. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) There's a big difference between revenue and profit. And I was just so focused on revenue. I wasn't tracking profit. I was focusing on the top line, not the bottom line. How do you think that uh, worked out when it comes when it came to mitigating my expenses and maximizing how much how many zeros and commas are left after everyone else is getting paid? Not well, right? Because I was making it about top line instead of bottom line. But I'm realizing it as I get older. Bottom line is what matters. Bottom line is what I keep. It's not how much you earn; it's what you keep. So. This year, I'm committing for myself. I'm declaring it to all of you, making it public. This year, I'm focusing on the bottom line. And because I'm focusing on it, I'm already cutting the tentacles, the profit-killing tentacles of unnecessary expenditures. It's almost immediate. The moment, the moment I focus on that, the moment I commit to that, the moment I start tr- to track it and to step into the de- defiant resolve of saying never again, Because sometimes you got to get pissed off, right? Before you make a life change where it's like enough is enough. No more. I've had it. I'm done with this. I got to that fed up threshold where I'm like, I'm done making the world freaking rich and not having optimal profitability with an optimal profit margin. I'm done with that. I mean, if you're going to work, you might as well get freaking rich. The best way to help the poor is not be one of them. I want to help more people. I want to serve more people. I want to liberate more people. I want to liberate kids from the shackles of human trafficking to give them a hope and a future, a new life, a a new dignity. To do that, I need cash, cash money. To do that, I need profit. The best way to help the poor is not be one of them. And so I got to that fed up threshold. I got freaking pissed off with the problem. And it's because of that soul alchemy of disgust and resolve that I got to getting sick and tired of being sick and tired of making the world rich and not getting my profit margins where I need them to be that I decided never again. May you hold that in your own heart as the access point to breakthrough for yourself on your journey. Those two powerful words, never again. And once you cross that fed up threshold, now you want to start to track your progress, track it. What's your system for tracking your progress with your health? What's your system for tracking your progress with your wealth? So moving forward, I'm tracking my net worth scientifically on a Google sheet. I'm tracking my expenses. I'm tracking my payroll. I'm tracking every little penny. Why? Is it because I'm obsessed with money? No, I'm obsessed with progress. Progress. And we can't improve that which we don't measure. You with me on that? So... If you want to obsess with attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive, knowing it's the single most profitable activity you can ever do, the single most high impact and most high leverage activity you can ever do to push the needle on profit and performance in your business, bar freaking none, then you need to track it. Track it on your whiteboard. If you don't have a whiteboard, get a whiteboard. Track it on a Google sheet. I don't care what you use, but you want to start to track. What's your goal for the week? What's your actual for the week? What's your goal for the month? What's your, what's your actual for the month? Do the same thing with your income. Do the same thing with your volume. Do the same thing with your profit. What's your goal for the month? What's your actual for the month? What's your goal for the quarter? What's your actual for the quarter? What's your goal for the year? What's your actual for the year? Start to track that. That's one of the things that we help our clients with at, Pro, at uh, Planet Prosper here at MortgageMarketingCoach.com is tracking these sorts of things because we can't improve that which we don't measure. Here is another bonus driver, thrive driver number two, multiplication 
by subtraction. Less is more. So stop trying to do so many things and just focus like a laser beam on mining the gold from your database and attracting realtor partners. That's all you need to focus on. Just those two things. And start to be, give yourself permission to put the blinders on, right? To put the blinders on, to guard against all the distractions. Give yourself permission to turn your notifications off on your phone, on your computer. Give yourself permission to have allocated time to respond back to clients and partners at dedicated and specific and pre-designated times in your calendar instead of constantly being towed around by the electronic leash. Give yourself permission to clear the clutter in your life so that you can give yourself the gift of less is more. Give yourself permission to work less hours, but to make more money. How is that possible, Dorn? It's, it's called higher leverage. It's not how many hours you put in, but what you put into those hours. Chances are you'd be much more productive working 35 hours a week and being very intentional disciplined intention with those 35 hours a week, then working 55 hours a week, just flying by the seat of your pants without any purposeful intention or discipline around it. So less is more. Give yourself permission to apply this principle of less is more, whether it be your profitability, whether it be your productivity, whether it be you know any area of your life that matters to you. Less is more. So apply that principle and you're going to find that it's a bit like cleaning out a closet. It is challenging and it can get worse before it gets better, right? Because in, from, in my case, I'm now tracking all my finances much more, uh, shall we say, diligently with granular specificity. And I'm spending more and more time working on my business instead of in my business in building spreadsheets and getting my tech guy to set up zaps so that systems are talking and systems are inputting numbers. And uh, I'm doing a lot of stuff that normally I wouldn't get excited to do, but because I have a mission, because I have a vision, because I'm connected to the outcome, which is to be able to keep more money at the end of the day so that I can help my, so I can provide for my family at a higher level, but also I can help a whole lot more people and just claim freedom instead of just being the guinea pig in the guinea pig wheel, because I'm connected to what's at stake and I'm connected to the cause and I'm purpose driven by it. It's no longer a have to, it's a get to, I want to do it. I want to work on my business, not just in your, in my business, because I'm heart connected to the purpose around it. So now I can focus on that principle of multiplication by subtraction, because I'm actually spending time now going through all my numbers, going through everything. I'm cutting out all those tentacles, those profit killing tentacles that are sucking my profit margin. And it's like Benny Franklin, he said, a penny saved is a penny earned. I never really understood that until I got to that fed up threshold and I realized there's truth to that. But here's the great thing. Once I have these systems in place, once I have these policy procedure protocols in place that are undergirding my business with rock solid systems, so it's no longer a me-based business, it's a systems-based business. What happens to the likelihood that I can create the freedom I want, the prosperity I want, and the profitability I want goes way up, right? Why? Because I've laid the foundation because I'm speeding, I'm slowing down so I can speed up. I'm not just flying by the seat of my pants, focusing on urgent and important anymore because that's what kept me in this trap. I was so busy being busy. I was having a hard time being productive. Perhaps you can relate. I was so busy being busy. I was perpetuating the very problem I was perturbed about, which is being a guinea pig on a guinea pig wheel, working longer and harder for less and bleeding out and hemorrhaging profitability because I was too busy to hem up the holes in the bottom of the bucket. I was too busy being busy trying to fill the bucket with more sales and more clients and more, you know, quote unquote, productivity on the top line that I never took the time to hem up the holes in the bottom of the bucket 
that was hemorrhaging my bottom line. I know it sounds ludicrous, right? But this is welcome to being human. This is what humans do. We get so caught up in the urgent and the important that we never take the time to focus on the important but not urgent. And it's the important but not urgent. That's the realm of greatness that Stephen Covey talks about in his time management matrix and the seven habits of highly effective people. If you're not familiar, grab the book. It's a powerful and profound uh, part of the, the book, the time management matrix. And it talks about the four quadrants, right? The important and urgent, the important but not urgent, the not urgent and not important. And there's one other one. Anyway, the big idea, though, is most people spend most of their time in the important and urgent and the not important and not urgent. And that has them either putting out fires or chasing the trivial many. And as long as you're in that cul-de-sac of putting out fires, dealing with urgent matters, like deals that are being derailed in the pipeline, you know, deals that are on fire that you need to put out immediately if you're going to save the deal or scrolling on Facebook mindlessly. How do I know that you do that? Because I've been prone to do that. And I know this is a human proclivity to just drone and just scroll, right? It's unimportant and it's not urgent. It's just mindless activity just to kind of make it through the day to fill gaps because we get in the habit of doing it just to get that dopamine hit. And now we're in a habit of allowing ourselves to literally bleed out from a thousand razor cuts, a thousand little razor cuts where we're bleeding out, where we're wasting time, where we're just ambling aimlessly. And then we wonder at the end of the year, why it didn't pan out very well, why the bank accounts running on fumes, why we feel burnt out, why we feel so frustrated, why we're not seeing progress, why we're not seeing growth, why we're stuck in stagnation, regression, prison. I want to employ, I want to invite you to apply the multiplication by subtraction principle to earn more while working less to get more done while working less, doing less things, but getting a multiplied exponential result. How awesome would that be, right? That's called leverage. That's called impact. That's called freedom. And that's what I want for you. And I have a feeling you want it for you too. The last driver that I want to go over today, the Thrive Driver number three that I want to share with you today is a bonus tip is hire a master coach at the risk of seeming, seeming self-serving. I want to apply this principle and remind you of this principle because it's so mission critical. It's made a massive impact for me and chances are it already has, and it can also magnify and impact your accelerated results as well. And that is hiring a master coach, a master mentor, to hold you accountable and to accelerate your success. So instead of having to try and reinvent the wheel and create a recipe for success yourself, why not just leverage someone else's recipe? They've already gone through the blood, sweat, and tears of creating that recipe, that blueprint, that formula. They've already gone through the blood, sweat, and tears of failing forward and figuring out all the things that don't work so they can finally find out what does work. Why would you go through the unnecessary trouble and struggle and pain of going through all that unnecessarily if you don't have to. And on top of that, having someone in your corner to shine the light on your blind spots, because when you're inside the bottle, it's hard to see the label, right? You're just too close to the action. So that's the power of having a coach in your corner to shine the light in those areas that you just are too close to the action to see. And of course, to bring a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of specialized knowledge that allows you now to get that champion level cookie by having a champion level recipe. If you want the champion level chocolate chip cookie that Miss Fields chocolate chip cookies has generated by a lot of trial and error, you have to follow the Miss Fields 
chocolate chip cookie recipe. If you mess up the recipe, you're not going to get the result, right? If you put in too much sugar or you put in too little sugar, or if you put in too much baking soda, or if you put the oven too hot or too cold, all those variables will mess up the outcome. Same thing here. So if you want to condense decades into days and to be able to get more done in one month, you got done in the last 12 months. If you want to turn your annual income into your monthly income, if you want to double your income and double your time off, if you want to thrive like you never have before, then chances are you're going to have to get out of your own way by having someone else who has the proven plan, the recipe, and the battle-tested formula for success to spur you on to greatness by showing you, oh, don't do that. That doesn't work. Do this. Oh, stop doing this. That's causing you to hemorrhage opportunity. Do that. Oh, yeah. No, that right there, that's definitely doing it the hard way. That's going to cause you to trudge through mud with concrete blocks on your feet and waste a lot of time. Don't do that. That's a landmine you want to avoid. Instead, go this route instead. There's no landmines here. You don't have to worry about getting an appendage blown off because this path, we've already tested it. We've already proven that it's safe. We've already proven that it's fruitful. Take that path. Can you see how that takes the guesswork out? It takes the stress out. It takes the sleepless nights out. It takes the hoping out. See, that's part of a lot of people's problem is that they hope things are going to pan out. They hope things are going to get better. They hope that things are going to turn around. And so they start living in hope prison because hope is not enough. It doesn't matter if you hope you're going to move in the right direction. If you're heading east looking for the sunset, we got a freaking problem, right? So hope is not enough. So if you're listening to this, you're watching this, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down, brother. I needed this. I needed this kick in the butt. There's a lot of what you shared with me today in your vulnerability that resonated with me, resonated with my journey. Your journey became part of my journey and vice versa. I can see where I've been getting in my own way. I can see how I've been allowing whole prison to creep in and to keep me stuck in a cul-de-sac of suck. I can see how I've been making it too complicated. I can see how I've been uh, chasing after the trivial many instead of focusing on the vital few. I can see how I've been allowing myself to get in my own way and having diluted lackluster habits that are causing me to have diluted lackluster productivity. I can see how I've been working in my business instead of on my business. I've been putting out fires. I've been chasing after the urgent and important instead of the important, but not urgent. So if that's you and you're like, man, I am fed up with this. If you feel like you've gotten fed up where you're literally at the point where you're getting pissed off with this problem, where you're like enough is enough. No more. I freaking had it. I'm done living like this. I'm done with hemorrhaging opportunity. I'm done with living less than what I know I'm called to and capable of. I'm done with settling for good when I know I'm capable of great. I'm done with living a second best life in stress prison, in scarcity prison. I'm done with this sense that I'm called to more and capable of more and missing my purpose. If that's you, then I invite you to take a journey with me and take the first step towards creating your breakthrough. And the way you can do that, the way I invite you to do that is to book a complimentary breakthrough call with either myself or one of my consultants. On that call, we're just going to have an honest conversation. We're going to shine the light of truth on your situation to see if we can help you. We're going to look at where you're at, where you want to be, what's working, what's not working. And if we can help you create a breakthrough and bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to be, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, Frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, you will leave that call, my friends, with massive value, massive clarity, more clarity than you've ever had in your entire life in a 60-minute call. And chances are we're going to have some fun. Fair enough. If that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, and it definitely should, and you're 100% commission mortgage pro on a 70 basis points or higher comp plan, residential mortgage pro, 
and you're ready to take your business to a whole other level and step into thriving, not just surviving in 2023 and beyond, not just in a fair weather market, but in any market and to win in any market, including this market and to build an impervious rock solid recession proof business that allows you to thrive for years to come. Then I invite you to book a call and mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Well, that's it friends. I gave you a little extra dose of awesome last episode of 2022. I trust you got some value from our time together today. If you dig it, please leave your comments. If you dig it, go on iTunes and uh, give us a five-star review. We love to hear your comments. We love to see your reviews. And uh, also let us know if there's any additional topics you'd like us to cover. Join our Facebook group at Art of Mortgage Marketing Facebook group. It's one of the largest, if not the largest, Facebook group of its kind on mortgage marketing on planet earth on Facebook. So check us out. If you haven't joined the group yet, join it at art of mortgage marketing on Facebook. All right, y'all, this is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the art of mortgage marketing podcast, mortgage marketing coach.com. Be blessed. I wish you all the best of success in 2023 and beyond. Let's go after it. Let's step into it. Let's claim it. I see greatness in you. God doesn't make any junk. He didn't start with you. So step into that identity, friends. Know that this is your time to shine. Let's get after it. Make a wonderful and abundant and prosperous and healthy 2023. Not because you merely want it. Not just because you wish it. Not just because you think it would be cool. But because you know that it's why you're here. You're not here just to get by. You're not here to just make do. You're here to make freaking history. All right, friends, be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.